tell you, I'm, right now I'm looking at November, and uh, I'm, I'm getting, I'm coming from this from a neophyte perspective that you know I've, I've just entered this political realm. Uh, these gentlemen here have you know in the rings of the tree. I'm a sapling compared to these guys who are looking at this stuff. But the one thing I, I know is that money is power. And we're playing on a three-dimensional stage today, not just merely a, a, a one perspective. Uh, because money in and of itself doesn't quite do it. And we saw that with Prop 5. But go back a few years to Prop 13, when it was the citizens that raised the revolt and said, hey, we're going to change this whole structure of how the state is financed. And the citizens came forward and voiced their, what their, their dissatisfaction and passed 13 on the backs of Howard Jarvis. And he became the, uh, the poster child for tax reform. Well, today, we, we see something completely different. Uh, we have a special interest because in tough economic times, now we've got to move to another level. We have this whole issue of this initiative process driven on a stage of tough, tough economic times. Government can't afford to oppose a initiative. We don't have the money. We're, we're looking at laying off 4,000 people in LA. The state has released 30,000 uh, prisoners because uh, they're going to kick the can down the road because they don't have the money. And yet, we have this thing coming that may, sociologically, change the character of the state, if not the nation, as we talked about. This, this playing field that we're, we're working on, which is well-funded. It's, it's extremely well-funded. You know, Steve and I can tell you that most of the marijuana that comes into this, this city is probably drug cartel marijuana. And they have a legitimate source for sale up until a few weeks ago when we passed our ordinance. They have, they've been selling it in, in this city. And that money goes back. And I guarantee you that that money will drive uh, the, the legalization uh, argument. And so here we are with special interest money with, without a, a, a well-funded opposition. And it truly is not what the, I think the public wants. But it's what the public is going to be sold because of the, the advertising that they're going to get. Why? Well, in, in the past, we've seen this with the medical marijuana argument, that there's a little bit of intellectual dishonesty in the initiative process. If you go to the ballot statement on the intellectual uh, on uh, medical marijuana, you're going to see that it says, this stuff can't be sold. Well, then try take a ride down to the Boulevard and ask yourself that same question, what the hell's happening here? Because it is being sold. And we're, we are getting blowback and pushback from people because we are taking a contrary position to sell it. It's an interesting phenomenon. What, uh, I don't know the answer. I, uh, I don't know what, how we are going to counter uh, balance the, the, new, the new paradigm of this uh, initiative process. Because today's politics, as I saw seven months ago, is, uh, is driven in a big way by advertising. Bob and Joel, what do you do with the truth and advertising that the voters, that the people want, not just in California, but across the country? Um, and we need to have some sort of truth and advertising in essence. Then you're going to butt up against the First Amendment. What do you do with, uh, with, with, with when, you, when you see that kind of outside influence and, and the, the intention perhaps to deceive? Well, just, just let's put it in context, and I'll let Bob answer the tough question. Um, <laughs> what you do. Uh, remember that uh, with money, you can pretty well make sure you qualify for the ballot. But that does not necessarily mean you're going to get your initiative passed. There have been many studies on this at university levels. Uh, you have the money, you've got a couple of million dollars, yeah, you're pretty well going to make sure you're on the ballot. But just because you have more money than the opposition does not mean you're going to pass for the measure. And most measures actually fail, if you look at the statistics. And, and in fact, most of them don't even get in the ballot. Do you know that there are 90 initiatives that have gone through these attorney generals? Up? Oh, I lost count. 105 initiatives have gone through the process, through the attorney general's process to get a title and summary. It's a lot of work, Steve. Uh, <laughs> we're all going here. <laughs> 105, <laughs> okay. <so. laughs> Uh, you know, they've got to tell them the summary. The number that's going to get on the ballot is probably about six to eight. So, first of all, you eliminate a, a number. It depends if Bob gets enough money for his. Maybe it'll be 10. And Bob, before you get to that, let me just put out a bit of a hypothetical that frustrated me. 
uh, recently. We had locally Measure S. Measure S was a telephone tax, uh, and people didn't realize that if you're going to tax, uh, you know, if it's a tax cut, you don't have to vote for a tax cut. You do have to vote for a tax increase. And they described Measure S as a tax cut. Would you like to see uh, the, the telephone tax go from 10% to 9%? Well, in truth, and so they say yes, in truth, the telephone tax was illegal, the 10% telephone. So it was going, if, you, if you voted no, it was going to be no telephone tax. So the voters never understood it, and they were voting, they voted, they voted themselves in this tax increase. What do you do? How do you deal with this, uh, this quote unquote truth in advertising? I don't know, death penalty for political consultants, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would work. I you know? <laughs> well, you know, the, the political consultants that don't tell the truth, I mean, that was, that was a horrible situation because the courts made it illegal and they played this. It, it, it's just so insidious. That's, the, that's, that's one side of the issue. There's a couple of points I want to make. The public it gets it generally. Generally, they get it. We, we spent, you know, California Forward is this organization which I co-chair with a wonderful gentleman named Tom McCartan, who was the CEO of the Automobile Club. We're a bipartisan group supported by a number of the major foundations, and our job is to figure out how to fix California, a small issue, except he's got the title of his group called Fixed in California, so we're in it, we're it together. But any event, what we've done is we've spent a tremendous amount of money in, in polling and focus groups, and the bottom line of it all is, and I think it's pretty accurate, the public gets it. They're tired of all this stuff. They're tired of being asked all these questions. They're looking for the trick, whether it's the group is on the left or the right, to immediately respond, what's going on here? Someone's not telling me the truth. They've been through this enough. So these kinds of things, the telephone tax, or even the term limits locally, and some of the challenges that in the city, and some of the other issues about how it was played, you, you know, and you're going to face this challenge at, at, with term limits at the chamber, where you're saying you're cutting term limits, when are you really, you know, and that whole, that they're going to come back and beat you up on that, you're going to have a real issue there. Because I, I talked to Howard Rich, it's just what's going to happen, right? So, so, but I think the public is getting better at it, right? I just want to say one other thing. Dan wants to say something. I'm say one other thing I want to add to it, about this whole initiative thing that I think is important in the discussion. And that is, you know, I mean, there is some legitimacy in reserving the power to the public. But, you know, when I became Speaker of the Legislature, the, in the first week I was there, there was a powerful interest group that was threatening us that hadn't done anything before the legislature. And I see this time and time again. If you don't do this, we're going to put an initiative on the ballot. We have a million or two million dollars to put in the ballot, and we're trying to force your hand. It happened in the workers' comp deal with Joel, with those small business action committee in a positive way. It's handled in a lot of other ways in not a positive way. Anytime we try to reform the initiative process, no disrespect to my other colleagues here on the dais, but you have the political industrial complex that doesn't want anything to happen to it because it is the biggest gravy train for money in the business. And so, you know, you've got this, 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 this real disconnect where it's an important safety valve and used honorably for the public to make sure there's checks and balances. But also, there's all sorts of games that get played, and a lot of these is initiatives that are put on these ballots are done for a lot of insidious reasons, whether it's public policy reasons or particular economic reasons, to support somebody's business in another state or whatever it may be. And that's the thing that worries me the most. You're right. The, the, the Alfred Wharton, everything he said there was used on it. I mean, that is the, the drives this whole thing. The, and if you look at every example that, you, that Joel, that you gave, uh, the underwriting commonality of each of the time in which this happened was the, the presence of what was going on at the time. In essence, the, the initiative process became sort of a focus group or a referendum on whatever the, the current economy or the current uh, trends were uh, happening at that time in the nation or in the, in the, in the state. Well, today, um, the paradigm has shifted where the government doesn't have the ability to play the game as well as the well-funded special interests. And again, I'm going to go right, harken right back to medical marijuana because we're, it takes $100 million to elect a, govern, a governor in the state. Um, and these guys are going to have more than $100 million to put into that legalization effort. And, I, and I'll tell you right now that I can elect a ham sandwich and give me a couple hundred million dollars. I mean, and, 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 and at the end of the day, they're going to sell their message to us. They're going to sell their message. Now, I, I believe in the electorate, and I hope they can that they're smart. 